Hey folks, today is going to be a fun and exciting day. What you're looking at is parts that I'm going to put in my main computer. We are upgrading this to a Ryzen build. Some of you might be asking immediately why you're doing this. Didn't you um, get that uh, Haswell refresh build and plan to stick with that for the long haul? I did before I moved, as you can see by you know this table and everything. I'm in a, I'm in a new place and that means less computers and inevitably I'm when I when you upgrade machines at least when I upgrade machines I end up um, you know kicking the can down the road so to speak as far as parts how rude parts get um, parts get shifted from one machine to the other and uh, what I've decided to do was just rebuild my main computer and um, use this for the long haul and I've been wanting to get onto a DDR4 platform for a while anyway and this is the perfect time to do it because when, I, when I've been looking at Cabby Lake and Sky Lake I've just not been that impressed Ryzen on the other hand looks like it's a really good value for money and the chipsets don't look nearly as bad as they did for FX you guys may have remembered when I had F an FX processor and I liked the performance of the chip but the boards and the chipsets were just not that great um, that seems to be less of a problem with Ryzen so far, at least as far as ASRock boards go. I've noticed every other board but ASRock has kind of eh reviews on Newegg at the moment, as of yesterday, checking yesterday, which is, uh, you know, a Friday. But anyway, these are the parts for the new system. The system is going to be based around a Ryzen 5 1600, which has a massive 19 megabytes of cache. Holy crap, it's 3.2 gigahertz um, base clock. 3.6 turbo. Uh, there you go. Look at that Ryzen 5 box. Comes with a cooler that's actually decent now. Um, I cannot wait to take a look at that. There's your chip right there. The board this is going to be centered around is the ASRock AB350M-HDV. This is one of the cheapest motherboards you can get for the Ryzen platform uh, at the moment. And the funny thing is it's a mid-range chipset so the mid-range chipset has the cheapest board I, I, I don't understand that right now but the board has good features as you guys know I like my simplistic budget oriented but high quality motherboards it's a good, ch it's a good board it's, compa it's going to be compatible with A series APUs when they eventually come out for the Ryzen platform I can't wait for those There you go. And this is the biggest advantage to these new AMD chipsets. You get PCIe Gen 3. You didn't get that on the FX990, or the 990FXA, whatever that chipset was. Um, looks like the onboard video could support 4K, although I honestly would use a card for that um, myself. But that's the current state of things high density glass fabric PCB so pretty rugged boards this is the layout of the board here still has PS2 uh, you get your USB you get the video for APUs HDMI uh, you get a bunch of USB 3 there and you get your audio so as you can see it's it's a very simple traditional layout there's the board itself um, it has protection from spikes so the board doesn't die it can do triple monitors uh, just like a lot of the Intel boards can do, which is nice. Uh, it has Elna audio caps. Elna, for those of you who don't know, has made caps in a lot of Japanese receivers. I've seen them as far back as the 70s. Solid caps. And here are the specs of the board. Um, it supports the Ryzen chips and the A-series APUs. Uh, it has two RAM slots. PCIe 2.0 or PCI 3.0 x16 and a 2.0 x1. It supports integrated graphics on the A-series APUs. You get four SATA ports and an M.2 slot, which is just enough for what I need. Looks like you can use the fake RAID that's on board for RAID 0, 1, or 10. I'll be using none of them. Six USB 3.0, two front, four rear. Six USB 2.0, two front, four, or two, four front, two rear. <laughs> Realtek Audio, which I like, Realtek LAN, which I also like, and it's a micro ATX board. And of course it supports Windows 10, which we will be using. 
Now, along with that, I got 32 gigs of uh, G Skill uh, Flare X RAM. This RAM I got a good deal on. Uh, this is 32 gigs of RAM, and it cost about $200. When a lot, when a lot of this other RAM is 230, 260, a ridiculous amount of money. So I literally went for the cheapest Ryzen compatible memory I could find, and it, the speed is 2400. It's DDR4 uh, 2400, so it's still a decent speed. The uh, cache latency is uh, 15, so it's you know it, it still gets decent speeds. We are going to put an SSD in here, a 275 gig crucial SSD. These drives are a bit uh, weird in that crucial seems to over provision them with a chip and you get 275 instead of 256 or 250. So that's a little bit unusual. I got a new copy of Office to go with it, Office 2016, Home and Student, because I really don't use. The only, I really only use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. I don't use OneNote. I don't use Outlook. And for, for an email client, I prefer to use Thunderbird. I also got PowerDirector 15, which is pretty nice. Uh, there is one thing, actually, in this that I thought was kind of hilarious that we should take a look at. Let me see if I can find it. This, this is the most cringeworthy thing in the world. Vertical video editing. This video editor actually supports vertical video editing, which I guess would be useful if Vine still existed, but really guys don't edit don't do vertical video the vertical video is terrible I just thought I'd point that out because it's kind of funny but anyway we're going to be putting all that stuff into my computer case here same old Lee and Lee case I've been using for years and uh, yeah this should be good oh wow this lens is kind of dirty isn't it I should clean that off but yeah we're gonna stick it all in there uh, I'm gonna put everything together I'll show you what it, show you um, what it all looks like when it's done, including the graphics card and all that. The graphics card that's going into this, by the way, is my RX 460. So, it's a it's a modest setup for for a new system. So, there you go. I'm going to attempt to clean this lens because it's really disgusting. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the board in, and then we'll take a look. I did want to get unboxing the CPU on film just because of the cooler that it comes with. So, let's take a look at this guy here see what we got. Excuse me as I put the camera down to open the box here. Come on. It's the most graceful unboxing on YouTube. We're have to like fight with it. Anyway. Here we are. On one side you have your chip and a sticker. And you have the cooler which of course will have disgusting default thermal gunk on it so let's take a look at this cooler and see how decent it is that's a pretty nice cooler it's got a cop got copper on the bottom metal on the sides it looks a lot like the intel socket 775 coolers that i've used very nice might not need to get a third party cooler. This cooler might actually be good enough. Good for you, AMD. You've improved very, very much over the era of um, the FX chips where you give a pathetic cooler with a very hot chip. Now you're giving a pretty nice cooler with a nice chip. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I just wanted to take a look at that cooler real quick. Uh, you'll see how it looks in the machine pretty soon. But, yeah, I'm going to get started putting it together. I'll be back soon. Here's what the chip looks like in its socket. Look at that. Beautiful. That's what the board looks like, by the way. Looks brand new, looks really nice. Looks really good. There's the M.2 slot right there. That's where the SSD is going to go. Got your four SATA ports there. It's a pretty nice looking board. There's the RX um, 460, by the way. We're going to shove that in this machine. The power supply is the same. It's still my PC power and cooling 750 watt, which I'll be keeping forever if I can. Three hard drives. I think two are two terabytes and one is one terabyte. Maybe they're all two terabytes at this point. I can't remember. I think they're all... No, I, I think... Yeah, I have a one terabyte and a couple two terabytes. That's what I have. And then there's going to be... And then there's this SSD, which I need to put on the board, but 
I figure I should show you what that chip looks like in its socket before I put the cooler on. Now to put the cooler on these, you'll notice, for those of you that are very familiar with AMD, you'll notice that they still have these brackets on there so you can use the older coolers. But the cooler that actually comes with the chip tells you to unscrew these and just screw it right into the back plate, which I like better personally. Because I've noticed on the older coolers, um, when, you, when you would tighten them down, it would warp the board right there a little bit. Uh, I have an ASRock, an older ASRock board that does that, and I've seen other boards do it too, and it's just not nice to do that to a board, so even pressure, that's what you like, even pressure with screws, so I'm going to clean the crappy grease that came with it off and put my own Arctic Silver on there and uh, stick, put the rest of the machine together. And here she is all put together. There's the heat sink, nice and neat on there. This Cable. So these cables aren't the neatest in the world. But there's your RAM down there. Got the RX 460 in there. One thing I noticed that kind of worries me a little bit is that this corner of the board right there is kind of bent down slightly. Not enough to be broken off, but it came that way. You can kind of see the, the change in the light there. It's a little bit... Yeah, let me see if I can get down in there and get a good view of that. See how it's a little, it's a little bit bent? It came that way. I didn't actually do that. So I'm hoping that what's around that area is just a ground connection so it really won't do anything. Okay, so the good news is that all my parts work. That's what I at least wanted to test. That bend in the board really started to bother me after a while because that shouldn't be there on a brand new device. So I have sent, so I'm going to send this out to Newegg and get a replacement. This is going to delay the build by about a week and a half, which I really didn't want to have happen, but when a board has about seven layers in it and there's a bend in the side, that's generally not good for longevity. So in the long run, this is a good idea to get this replaced. So anyway, uh, I got Windows installed on the SSD, so when I get the new board back, I can just stick the SSD in the new board and it should just work because it's a retail key and not an OEM key so I should be good I should be good so hopefully I'll come back in a, about a week or a week and a half and I'll have the parts back I suspect I'm not gonna get them until because this is two-day air to Newegg and they send stuff back super egg saver I, I think it's gonna take a while <laughs> so yeah slap anyway Finally, like a week or two later, I have a board. Um, so, funny story, I returned the B350 board, and they refunded me because they were out of stock of the one I ordered, uh, even though I ordered replacements. So, that gave me permission to order a different board. This board is, has the A320M, is an A320 chipset, which is the lowest end chipset that AMD offers for the Ryzen and A series APUs. But that doesn't really bother me because this board has is so much better. So much better than the other one I chose. So this was a bit of a blessing in disguise. It has better I.O., it has more RAM slots, it, it, everything about it is better. So there is a B350 version of this particular board too. That's basically the same board, same I.O., same layout, but with a different chipset. Uh, this I got because of availability. I, would, I probably would have opted for a B350 version, but this was available. It was only $5 more than the board I already bought before, and I figure it was a good idea to just, you know, go ahead and grab it. I'm, I'm not really going to notice the difference because I never would have used the overclocking features or the SLI and Crossfire features on the higher-end chipsets. Um, Stability is what I care about. Are you serious? Uh, every, this RGB stuff, man, it's just, that's so gamer. <laughs> Not a huge fan of the of RGB everything, to be honest with you. IO shield. SATA cables. Hey! And a screw. And another screw. It looks like both of these screws are for the... Um, the MSATA slots. This thing has two MSATA slots, by the way. It has an M.2 Ultra and a regular M.2. So let me unwrap this board. We'll take a look at it and show you why it's better than the other one. Then I will install everything, put Windows back on that S on my SSD, and we will continue on as before, as if this never had to happen. <laughs>
Okay, here's a look at the replacement board. It has many of the same features, like the Elna audio right there. Uh, but as you can see, it, it's a little bit more flashy. There's there's heat sinks on the VRMs, which makes me feel happier, even though it probably won't really utilize those since I'm not overclocking or anything like that. Not that you can overclock on the A320 chipset in the first place. It has the four RAM slots, which is fantastic. That means I could put 64 gigs of RAM on this. This board will take CPUs that use more than 65 watts, so it's not limited like the other board was. You get two PCI Express slots here. One of them is X16, and this one looks like it's X4. So you could use that for RAID cards or, uh, you know, whatever else. Then there's an X1 slot as well. There's your Ultra M.2 slot. There's also another slot down here. So there's two of them. However, this slot uses one of the SATA ports. Now, the I.O. is the main reason that I got this board. Look at this I.O. You get real PS2. You get... Um, some USB 2.0, you get DVI, VGA, uh, HDMI. You get VGA on a brand new platform. I love that. Even though I'm probably not going to use that since there's no APU in here. USB-C. Yes, this has USB-C on it, which in a way is like getting a, was like getting a Firewire port on your motherboard back in the day. That's how I see USB-C. It's a bit like a replacement for Firewire or Thunderbolt or whatever. A bunch of USB 3s here. You get your Ethernet and your audio. So the I.O. on this is much better, I think. It's just a much better board in general. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with my purchase. I, I think I'm going to really like this board. So I'm gonna, going to install it, put all my parts in, um, and, act, and the footage of the other board just act as though it was on this board instead. The um, what model of board is this? The A320M Pro 4. Just, just go with that. Just, just, yeah, it's that. That's what that's what the specs will be down in the description. So you know, there you go. Um, so let's put this together and get on with the Windows 10 installation. Okay, this is what the new board looks like with everything in the case. Look at that. There's your 750 watt power supply. There's the RAM and the two extra slots there. And there's the heat sink. There's the RX 460 4 gig version. One thing this board has that's really nice is it has extra ports for the speaker, the PC speaker, which believe it or not I still use, and the power LED. The old board didn't, so this board is just proving to be so much better than the other one. So I think it's time to get Windows 10 on here and let it do its thing. Okay, smoke test. It turns on. Let's see if we can get to the BIOS here. Come on. Come on. Oh, there it goes. Took a little while to post on the first boot there. Yeah, we got our beep. That's what we like. The reason I like still having a PC speaker in systems like this is for temperature sensors. If the temperature gets too high, it'll beep at you. That's pretty important when dealing with computers. That's why I like to still have the PC speaker, but look at this BIOS. Doesn't that look nice? They even have the Pro emblem and stuff there. Here you go. There's the Ryzen 5 1600 running at 3.2 uh, gigahertz. Uh, 16 megs of L3 cache. That's pretty nice. 32 gigs of memory. Why is it in single channel mode? Why on earth is that in single channel mode? Maybe I misread the way to install the RAM. I think I'm going to have to open this up and put the other RAM stick in slot B1 instead of A1. Yeah, maybe they changed it to the to the uh, the way that Intel does it. Yeah, I'll change that in a second. Let's take a look at the hardware monitor first. CPU temperature is at about 40 degrees C. That's pretty good for idling on the stock cooler. Motherboard temperature is about 30 C or so. So that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to leave the I should just leave everything the same, I think. Unless the temperatures get crazy. I think that's blowing at its... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I can leave the fan stuff alone. That's good. Has over temperature protection. That's what we want. And, of course, why is it booting from the SATA stuff first? 
no, that's not what we want. Okay, so we have our two issues here. Let me shut the power supply off. Drain some of the power. I've got to move a RAM stick over, obviously, since it's not running in dual channel. That RAM gets a little hot. Hmm. All right. Put that stick in there. There you go. And I've discovered that this M this uh, M.2 slot doesn't seem to support uh, SATA type M.2 SSDs. It only supports the PCIe ones. So what I'm going to have to do is buy a SATA card for this machine. Probably stick it up there, and uh, that can run my Blu-ray drive, and everything. All, the, all these drives here can just plug straight into the motherboard, uh, no big deal, so. Yeah, there is that. I think we'll be doing okay after that. It looks like uh, I just have to rearrange the SATA stuff, and I won't be able to use my Blu-ray drive until I get that card, which honestly <laughs> isn't the biggest deal in the world. I don't really, the only thing I really use this for is for archiving stuff and imaging um, DVDs and CDs and stuff like that, so. It's not like I'm going to need it right away, but I do need all the hard drives connected, so I'll buy a SATA card for this thing and then be done with it. Okay, I moved the SSD to the, to the other M SATA slot, or M.2 slot, uh, and I moved the memory around, and it's in dual channel now, I'm running at DDR4-2400, just like it's supposed to, so... Yeah, I, I just screwed up. I. I was thinking back to old AMD motherboards where you used to put them next to each other, but I forgot that they changed that. Whoopsie. 45C. Yeah, this this processor runs a little toasty, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, boot option number two. Does it see it? Does it see it? Yes, it does. It does see the crucial SSD. That's what we want. Okay, now I just need to get out my. Uh, my Windows 10 uh, SD card and we're good to go so I'll put that together here actually I don't even need the card reader I can just use the uh, I can just use this card reader and we're good to go stick it in there and then we'll install Windows 10 looks like we're moving along pretty well Looks like it's UEFI by default, which is nice. Uh, this has RGB LED stuff on it, which I'll never use. Uh, what can we do in here? Cool and Quiet's on. I don't know what FTPM is. I guess that's uh, AMD's version of the Intel TPM stuff. IOMMU stuff. Onboard stuff, deep sleep, restore on power loss, I always leave that stuff the same. Storage. Hey. Yeah, that's a PCIe SSD slot, so I could get a PCIe SSD later on and use that, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just get a SATA card for my Blu-ray drive. So the board does have fake RAID, which I would not recommend using. I'd recommend using a real RAID card. Which you can put in that X4 slot that we looked at. It has a trusted computing stuff in it. Let's turn that off. I don't have a TPM device in this computer, but I, I don't want to put it one in there anyway. What is CBS? Wow, you can really customize a ton. This is the lowest end chipset too. Just think about that. There's a lot of stuff in here for it being the lowest end chipset. Looks like you have BIOS flash utilities and stuff like that. Wow, this CPU is getting hot. I think that's because it's hot in this room right now. I also have the, I don't have the air conditioning up very... I have the air conditioning at like, I don't know, 75 on the wall unit, so it's not really... It's not cool in here by any means, so I think that's why we're seeing those temperatures creep up so much. It's just a little hot in here. But I think it'll be fine. Uh, once it gets hot, the, the fan curve will tell it to move move higher. You know what? 
We can do a custom fan curve. Why don't we do that? I, I like to do that on these on these boards. I think that's a good fan curve. So I'll reboot that. We'll go back to the BIOS and see what that does for the temperature. Come on. That does run the fan a little higher than the stock stuff does, though, so we'll see what happens here. Those custom fan curves tend to help a little bit. What's it staying around? That's CPU temperature up top we're looking at. Looks like it's holding around 50. I don't know. That's probably fine. That's my custom fan curve. Uh... Yeah, I don't know what else to do. That's that's my custom fan curve. I'm probably going to leave that alone or change it back to standard, depending on what I've decided. But I think before I do anything else, it's time to install um, Windows 10. So let's do that. Okay, this is a couple days later. I've been using the Ryzen build for uh, work and play and whatever else. Pretty much through uh, the weekend, uh, right up to now, which is May 1st. So... What do I think of it? So far, it feels extremely stable. Uh, I've had no issues whatsoever. The only real glitch I ever had was when I was installing it, and it f it froze, I think, um, on a reboot or something like that. That's the only thing it ever did. Ever since then, I've had no issues whatsoever. It's been a fantastic system. Uh, it's looking like Ryzen. Ryzen's very promising, and I'm very happy about that. Um, so... Yeah, I've even gamed on a little bit, a little bit of Forza Horizon 3. Seems to work just fine, no issues whatsoever. The RX 460 seems to pair well with the system, despite its lower end nature. And, uh, yeah, I I'm very happy with this Ryzen system. I'm glad to see AMD on top again, considering that's where I started. I started with the AMD Athlon 64 3200 Plus. Now we're on the Ryzen 5 1600. It feels like coming home almost to have an AMD system as a main computer again. I've wanted to do this for years, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that time has finally come. I think this AMD system is going to last me a long time, um, and I'll be very happy with it. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of computer rebuilds soon that are going to be long term, very long term upgrades. At least that's the way they're planned. Um, this one in particular. Uh, so, let's show you the system. Here's the system you're seeing now. It's uh, Windows 10 Professional, as you can see, build 1703. And here are the specs of the system as displayed. It has the Ryzen 5 1600 6 core processor at 3.2 GHz and 32 gigs of RAM. That RAM is going to be doubled sometime this week, actually. I managed to pick up another kit of 32 gigs. So this computer is going to just be com the definition of excess with <laughs> 64 gigs of RAM in it. I'm just, I'll be honest with you, I'm just doing that because I can. <laughs> doing that will probably make this computer last a long time anyway, because when I spend money on RAM, it never goes to waste. I tend to not get rid of RAM, ever. So I've only ever done it once, and I kind of regretted it afterwards. So I, I tend to keep my RAM around. So this thing, the specs you see here are pretty much it, except that it's going to have double the RAM once that comes in through the mail. So <laughs> that's going to be the definition of excess. We're going to have another computer build for my bedroom coming along. My original plan with this machine was to build this and then hand me down the parts to the bedroom PC, but I have a better idea. I'm going to hand me down these parts to the sleeper build. And, um, and, and then we're going to uh, just build the new... AMD based system in the bedroom. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, it's not Ryzen, I'll at least say that. It's something else. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a fun build. Uh, so that, that'll be coming up after this. Uh, it seems like we're doing a lot of computer stuff lately. But that's fine with me. I mean, this computer stuff is pretty fun. So, yeah, Ryzen. I think this is going to be a 
a very big success for AMD. It just it seems very stable, very nice. The only real instability I've had is in VirtualBox. But that's because, I think that's because VirtualBox just hasn't caught up with the hardware yet. Uh, it'll, it'll be there eventually, so that's really nothing to worry about. In case you're wondering what my setup was like, I have my uh, Velocifier keyboard here on my uh, L-Desk. Cherry Brown switches, I got the Microsoft Wheel Optical here. And uh, of course the Logitech, what is this, the G, or the F310 controller. And a headset, so you know there you go. Um, so anyway, Ryzen build, very satisfied with it, very happy. It's nice to have an all AMD system again, full of components that are actually good. You know, uh, if you guys have been watching me, the guy, the, let's try that again. Those of you who've been watching me for a very long time know that I actually had an FX6300 for a while, and I've discovered that the FX series, the FX series of CPUs, is not unlike the Athlon XP era, where the CPUs, well, back actually the Athlon XP was a little different. The CPUs were fantastic, and the boards were crap. With FX-based stuff, it just seems like everything is crap. <laughs> the well, the CPUs aren't that bad, but they're not that great either. But the boards, I've noticed, are just not good. I mean, I, I had that 970 board that was horrible. The a 970 chipset board. This, these, this Ryzen stuff is so much better. It's unbelievably better. Um, you know, coming from Haswell, I, I, I don't really notice any stability, di stability difference whatsoever. And that makes me happy. I, I think there's definitely hope for AMD yet. If they keep this up, I think they'll be doing well for a long time. So good on you, AMD. You did a good job this time. I can wholeheartedly recommend Rise, a Ryzen build because these CPUs are really good for the money, and the the platforms seem to be pretty stable. So yeah, there you have it. Okay, I've actually I edited a couple videos on this computer yesterday, and wow, PowerDirector 15 on this Ryzen build is very stable. It's so much nicer to edit on this rig than it was on the. Um, on the uh, the Haswell one for some reason it's just way better now that's that's interesting <laughs> so it definitely was worth the upgrade because it this is um, just a much 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 better system for video editing alone uh, exporting the vi I export videos in half the time I used to it used to take around five six minutes now it takes about three minutes to export that's with GPU rendering on an RX 460 it that Wow, that that's fantastic. So that means if I do a really long video or I do video conversion projects, it I cut my time basically in half. That's pretty cool. So Ryzen is very very nice. I like it. So yeah, that's just my first real experience pushing the chip and the uh, graphics and all that stuff. And wow, it's whew. I'm very happy with it <laughs> to say the least. So. I hope you enjoyed this video um, on this Ryzen build, and it was just it was well worth it. I'll say that. So if you're thinking about building Ryzen, I would say go for it because it the platform seems pretty stable. In just a little bit that I've used it, uh, video editing for me on this has been stellar, absolutely stellar. Um, gaming is you know the same as it was before because it's basically the same classic graphics card, but no bottlenecks or anything like that. So that's pretty nice. So anyway, Ryzen is awesome. Very awesome. I'd say go for it. And we come to the end of this video before I keep waffling on too long. So have a good one, everybody. Ciao.